Thanks be to God.
19th century American philosopher, Ralph Waldo Emerson, suffered from an increasingly faulty memory. At the funeral of one of his great friends, the poet Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, Emerson commented <coughs> to a family member that uh, he said that this, that gentleman has a sweet, beautiful soul, but I have entirely forgotten his name. <laughs> the loss of memory is a sad thing. It cuts us off from days gone by. It strips away the treasured residue of our past experiences in life. It erases our personal history. And it leaves us with the un, uh, with uncountable blank pages that will never be filled in. Just the other day, I was visiting with my mom who has had dementia for over 10 years. And visiting with her at Olive Branch Rehab, we were having a little chat in the common area. area. And as we were talking, mom would pause for a moment every couple of minutes and she would, would would remark I've forgotten what I was going to say certainly for mother it's unfortunate inconvenient and at times even embarrassing her, uh, for her not to remember yet without a doubt for some people the failure of memory is largely unavoidable it just happens, doesn't it? Can I get a witness in the house? Yes. However, it's not always the case. Sometimes we are forgetful because we neglect. We neglect that which has gone before us and we become inattentive to those things that precede us. For many people, they center all of their attention and energy only on their own time and place and act as though the present is all that matters in their life. I, I know you know people like that. As if the past were some shabby thing that could be cast off and discarded like an old pair of worn out tinny pups. Y'all don't know what tinny pups are. They're sneakers. My grandfather calls them tinny pups. I don't know why. Here we are with Memorial Day upon us. On this occasion, we're called to remember and to respect those who have died, those whose days are now gone. And I guess for many people, though, we don't always reflect on the past during the holidays. In our present age of our social media and ever-changing uh, culture around us, and where uh, our customs are changing and certainly we've seen in recent years many of our traditional values have changed. We don't tend to look to the past anymore to find wisdom. And that's most unfortunate. And this generation of young people, and I'm not down on young people, it's just always easy to blame them for everything, isn't it? Okay. Uh, maybe I'm wrong about this, but there seems to have little place left anymore for traditions or inherited customs or treasured values. And so when Memorial Day rolls around, their thoughts maybe do not automatically turn to the past and the departed. Many are not even aware of the wars that we have anymore. And if you were to ask many on the streets of America today, if they could name some of the past wars or any of the famous people uh, who defended our country, uh, they would have a hard time remembering because they have not learned. Most people appreciate Memorial Day, and I hope I'm wrong about this, but most of them appreciate it largely because it's an extra day off. My purpose is not to be an advocate for a renewed practice of Memorial Day. This holiday is not expressly religious. It's a secular holiday. But nevertheless, Memorial Day can serve 
to promote a value that is elevated all throughout Scripture, and that value is the importance of remembrance. Jesus said it himself, didn't he? Do this in remembrance of me. You see, a failure of memory is not some, just something which leads to, like my mom, personal inconvenience or some kind of social embarrassment because the people around the table remind mom, you can't remember anything. And they can't either. <laughs> the Bible also reminds us that there is a spiritual danger involved of forgetting what God has done. A failure of memories and those things which are most significant can and often does result in a failure of faith and of practice. And we see the foundations of that which we truly believe through recent years as it relates to Scripture being eroded before us. Forgiveness <coughs> can and will erode the foundation of our relationship with God. And as a nation, as we forget, we tend to walk in harmful paths. We only have to look to Scripture to find this truth. Now, if you are a student of Old Testament, you know that God does place great importance upon remembrance. Throughout the Scriptures, in the Old Testament and the New, and especially in the Old Testament, we find references to monuments, to memorial feasts, and just over the last year, I've had the privilege of leading a Wednesday morning Bible study discussing the feast of Israel and how important that they are and how God has co commanded for the people who follow after him to remember these important events and how they relate to us in our faith in our everyday lives. They are memories and rituals, repeated stories, all which serve to reinforce the sacred memory of the people of God. In various ways, the great saving acts of God are rehearsed and represented to us over and over. That's what the sacraments of the church are all about. They're something that are sacred and they are represented to us. Next Sunday, we'll come together to celebrate Holy Communion. And once again, the sacrament of Holy Communion will be represented to us and we'll have an opportunity once again to renew our faith and our belief, to stand as a community of faith for what we believe in, the saving acts of God. The Old Testament text that Barbara read for us this morning is one of my favorite. It stands out to me as one of the great examples of this practice. The biblical narrative which leads up to this text tells us of the stories of the Israelites' long-awaited entry into the Promised Land. After 40 years of wilderness wandering, the people finally reach their destination. The banks of the Jordan are swollen with water. Their access to the promised land is blocked. And they stop for a moment. And God commands through Joshua that the priests who are carrying the ark go and stand in the, their feet into the water. And as they do, the water ceases. And it, they cross over dry land, dry land. And when they are finished passing over the Jordan, the leader of Israel, Joshua, had a simple monument built to commemorate this wondrous event. And then he tells the people, when your children ask, why are these stones here? We have an opportunity to remind them of the greatness and the goodness of God. Amen that had carried them into a promised land. The Passover feast, which Moses instituted, was there to serve a similar purpose. It was to remind the people that God had given them new life, new freedom, had brought them out of their, uh, their bondage into liberation, out of slavery into freedom. The psalmist summed up the message very well in Psalm 105 and verse 5 
when the psalmist says, remember the wonderful works that God has done, God's great deeds and judgment. Amen. Remember and don't forget. Usually around the third Sunday of May, Methodists celebrate on that Sunday this important, our important heritage. And that's why Francis Asbury was with us this morning. We're grateful for Francis. If we forget the value of our heritage yes. and the source of our blessing, it will become very easy for us to take for granted all that we have and all that we are. There is a negative side to memory as well. Sometimes dwelling on the past can be a means of escaping the problems of the present and the disturbing prospects of the future. Now, sometimes we're tempted to glorify the days gone by. Y'all don't look so holy at me. You do it all the time. Remember the good old days. Yeah, back before you had air conditioner and didn't have a refrigerator and had to go to an outhouse. Those were the days, wasn't they? I suppose all we all people we seem uh, to continue to talk about how great things used to be. <coughs> Life was simpler. Friends were closer. Motors were more pure. Morals were higher and so on and so on. Consequently, some people who are disappointed with the present, distressed over the future, tend to live in the past. Their memories are highly important to them, but they do not have hopeful memories for the future. I like to use that term, hopeful memories, because hopeful memories do not drag us into a past that lock us there and hold us prisoner. Hopeful memories does not tell us that the best life has already come and gone. Hopeful memories doesn't say, well, the church will never be what it used to be. And we sort of live in this dread. Rather, hopeful memories call us into a living faith and to a God that still is and still able to do far above and beyond that we can ever hope, dream, or imagine. When the prophets of old called upon the Lord's people and told them to remember the works of the Lord and what God had done for them in the past, this was a way to prepare them for their future. Don't forget the Lord your God when you go into the land that's been promised to you. They were to remember the wonders of the past so that their lives would be open to the even greater wonders that God would do for them in the future. Let me give you an example of a hopeful memory. As I mentioned, next Sunday we'll celebrate the Lord's Supper together as a memorial meal. Now that memorial meal does not falsely glorify the past. When we partake of the bread and the cup, we remember the body of our Lord and the blood of the Lord shed for the forgiveness of sins. We recall those images of deceit and betrayal and cruelty that was imposed upon our Lord. The memorial feast confronts us with the reality that human sin is capable of doing horrible things to good, righteous, and holy people. The events that surround the Lord's Supper remind us of the fact that we as humans are all too capable of high treason and high crimes against the true holiness and supreme goodness of God and treating it as demonic if it did not work as if things did not work out to our advantage. Certainly that's not the kind of memory we want to hold dear. But the Lord's Supper does more. It reminds us of the sacrificial love of God. It speaks to us of a love that will not let us go. A love that reaches out to us, pardons us, forgives us, despite our evil. Yet in the Lord's Supper we see more than that. We also see the promise of Jesus Christ, who will come again. 
that we will eat again and drink anew by yes. the Lord in the kingdom that He has prepared for all of us. Amen. The Lord's Supper points us not only to the past, but towards your promised future as well. The meal is a memorial that enforces a hopeful memory. I know that the world seems like it's going to hell in a handbasket. I understand your thoughts and your feelings about the direction that many of our leaders are taking our churches into bad and hurtful directions. Hallelujah. But I'm also hopeful that God is not through with the United States of America, our world, and our denomination. Because I believe that the best is still ahead of us. Because God is still in the miracle working business. God is still wanting to bless our nation. And God is still wanting to raise up a church that will, will proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. I know it's easy to get stuck in the past. Remember when the church was this. Remember when our nation was that. But let's not get so stuck in the past that we forget to live in the present. Pray for the leaders of our nation. Pray for the leaders of our denomination. Pray for those who will guide the church in the future. And be hopeful that God has all things in His hands. With a memorial day upon us, it's proper to think of the past. And we should. And of those who have gone from this world who are no longer <coughs> present with us. But for those of us who are Christians, <clears throat> this is not an exclusively, exclusively an exercise in looking behind and dwelling on what has been. For we as believers have more wondrous things that are yet to come. For those people of faith who have already died, who have given their life so that this nation this church can be what it is today. We should remember them. We should pray for those that God will call to be the leaders for our next generation. We live in light of the resurrection and we believe that death, death will, be, will not be the end. That there's more life to live. In closing in 1969, Clarence Jordan died of a heart attack. Who is Clarence Jordan? As some of you know, Jordan was the author of the Cotton Patch version of the Bible and was the founder of uh, Koinonia Farms, an interracial community and innovative ministry that was housed in rural Georgia. His work had faced vicious opposition from many races in his area in the 1950s and 60s. In fact, when Jordan died, there were no local coroners or undertakers who were willing to help. Jordan was buried in a plain cedar box and a hillside on his farm. Mildred Fuller, that's the name, the founder of Habitat for Humanity, of Humanity officiated that funeral. At, just after the casket, casket was lowered into the ground and the grave was covered with dirt, an unexpected thing happened. Fuller's two-year-old daughter stepped up to the grave and began to sing the only song that little girl knew. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Clarence. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday at a funeral. How strange and how yet so appropriate. For when a Christian dies, it's a birthday of sorts because death is not an ending. Death is a new beginning. And so when we think of our dead, let us do so with a hopeful memory of an amazing future that still awaits them and the rest of us as well. Today we remember our fallen vets. We honor, we, we honor their past. A hopeful memory is we could all live in peace 
And we could all look for with faith to a Messiah who will come and make all things new again. In the meantime, as we wait until God comes and transforms our world, as we wait until the church rises up again, let us as people of faith, as Americans, as Christians, as believers, live into the heritage that has been handed to us. Live into our faith as we remember the past of what God has done, but that God calls us now in the present to build a better future for those who are coming after us. You remember those young people I sort of uh, spoke poorly of? You know, the generations that are coming up that we wonder, boy, this is the next leaders. We have a message to tell. We have stories to relay. We have a history as people of God and as a people of this nation to pass on to our children and our children's children. Because if we fail, they will fail. And we serve a God. We serve a God Hallelujah. who calls us yes. to live and a hopeful remembrance. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We remember the past, surely. We live in the present, faithfully. And we pray for a better world, hopefully. Amen. As Christ, we know, will come again. This Memorial Day, as you put out the ribbon, anybody having ribs? <laughs> Hot dogs, hamburgers, <coughs> chicken, potato salad, baby. I'm getting hungry already. <laughs> Take just a moment. Tell the stories to our children so that they'll know what this nation has endured so that we can enjoy the freedoms that we have. Next Sunday when we come together, on your way to the church and you're driving with one another and your children are in the car, your grandchildren, tell them the stories of a man who came into a world of darkness, who loved us unconditionally, who died for us so that we could have abundant and eternal life. Set down stones of remembrance for these people and these little ones in your life so that they'll have a foundation to build their life and to share to the next generation. But that is how we will change this world. Let us pray. Holy God, we thank you for the memories that we have with those men and women who give them their all. Yes, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for thank Jesus you, Lord. Christ who came to live and die and rise again that we can yes. have abundant and eternal life. Lord, help us to live in the present, to live into our faith, to never forget the heritage of our nation, the heritage of our Christian faith, and the heritage of being Methodist. For it is through people called Methodists that transformed this continent. Lord, I believe that you can do it again. May it start in Myrtle Grove. Be asked in the name of Christ. Amen. Would you stand and we're going to close with a short little song called Shalom to You. That's hymn number 660.
peace. May the peace of God be with you. May the peace of God reign in this world. Hallelujah. May the peace of God quiet hostilities and anger and racism. May the peace of God dwell in you. Amen. That the peace of God may dwell in our world. Go in peace and may shalom be with you. Amen. Amen. Now, before you, oh, just a minute. I had an announcement. <laughs> the announcement is the office is closed tomorrow. Yes. But that, and yes, Chuck, Fish Fry Friday is coming up. The last thing is don't forget to wear your undies next. I mean, no, excuse me. Don't forget to bring underwear. We're having Undie Sunday next Sunday. We're collecting underwear for the shut ins. Don't forget your underwear. You got it? Oh my God. <laughs> to give to the homeless. Uh. Well, I think he said the shut-ins. That might be the, the people that are in the nursing homes. And they, yes. I'm not sure. Okay. <laughs> He's so crazy. I think I think the homeless uh, sisters in service, they're calling in the underworld. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, we're done already. Uh, happy Sunday. Happy Blazing Sunday. And thank you so much for watching this video and may the lord bless you and happy blessed sunday thank you bye <laughs> Ikaw ang bumabay sa aming pag-aaral Na hihirap sa buhay, ikaw ay nakaalala Jesus Christ, love and care ministry Kahit di ka nakikita, I always know your love for me Handang tumulong sa mga nangangilangan Sa iyong gabay, kami ay may natutunan Napakabuti ng inyong mga puso Sa mga tulong nyo, meron niyong balik sa dulo Laki ng aming pasasalamat Laging dasalang malayo sa kahirapan Jesus Christ Love and Care Ministry Napakabuti ng iyong puso sa pagtulong di na huli Sana hindi magbago ang iyong pagkatao Tuloy-tuloy mo lang dahil lahat kami saludo Jesus Christ and Love and Care Ministry Napakabuti ng iyong puso sa pagtulong di na huli Sana hindi magbago ang iyong pagkatao Tuloy-tuloy mo lang dahil lahat kami saludo Sa bawat pag-ising mo pagtulog Sa katauhan namin ikaw ang humubog Mga pangaral at salita mo sa amin ay tumatawag at pinurin mo kami sa mundo na isang anak Di mo pinabayaan sa oras ng kahirapan Binusubin may kagutuman na nararanasan Ikaw ang tanging inan namin kaluman Diyos na ang bahalang magbalik sa iyong kapaitan Mga pangaral mo ang nagsilbi sa aming aral Nagbigay lapis at papel bumubuhit na parang anghel Nagpatayo ng simbahan kung saan pwede naming masilungan Maging takuhan ito yung binabalot ng kadiliman Salita ng Panginoon ko nila nila Jesus Christ in love and good means Napakabuti ng iyong puso sa pagtulong di na huli Sana hindi magbago ang iyong pagkatao Tuloy-tuloy mo lang dahil lahat kami saludo Jesus Christ and love and good ministry Napakabuti ng iyong puso sa pagtulong di na huli Sana hindi magbago ang iyong pagkatao Tuloy-tuloy mo lang dahil lahat kami saludo Jesus Christ and love and good ministry Napakabuti ng iyong puso sa pagtulong di na huli Sana hindi magbago ang iyong pagkatao Tuloy-tuloy mo lang dahil lahat kami sa lugo Jesus Christ and love and good ministry Napakabuti ng iyong puso sa pagtulong di na huli Sana hindi magbago ang iyong pagkatao Tuloy-tuloy mo lang dahil lahat kami sa lugo